I gotta get it out. I gotta get it out. I want you to go with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We're in the month of patterns. Thank you, Pastor Raymond, for those words. Thank you, Pastor Hammond, Pastor Bishop Sion Roberts. Let's give all of our campus pastors a hand. Thank you for those words. John chapter 8, verse number 1. John chapter 8, verse number 1. If you got it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, hold up. Hmm. If you don't know where to look. <laughs> Love you too, Sarge. Um, if you don't know where to look, we're going to have, you know what, we're going to do Bible study this month. I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do another not your typical let let's what day baby what day you want to do it the 23rd every week <laughs> y'all want to have bible study on the 23rd all right put it on your calendar we're gonna have bible study that tuesday john 8 and 1 says jesus went unto the mount of olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. Everybody say taught them. And the scribes who are like lawyers and writers and the Pharisees, religious people, brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. In other words, we caught her. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such a woman should be stoned, but what you got to say about it? This they said, tempting him that they might have a just cause to accuse him. Be careful what you say. And everybody who's asking a question doesn't deserve your response. Touch your neighbor and say, I ain't got to explain myself to you. If I shout the rest of the sermon, don't ask me, don't look at me funny. I ain't got to explain myself. You don't know what I've been through. I suggest you back up off me. But Jesus, this is what he did, and I'm, I'm hurrying, but Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not, verse 7, so when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself. Because see, sometimes you got to lift you up. There are way too many people depending on somebody else's affirmations to lift you up. When you down, you are responsible for picking you up. Touch your name and say, pick yourself up. And he said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. I want you to identify everybody on your road because if there is anybody on your road that has not sinned, you're going to be in trouble today. So find out if you got a, a perfect person next to you. I know some people think they are, but I need you to ask them, are you perfect neighbor? Because if you are, can you get out so we can get some more imperfect people in the room? The problem is, is that the only people in your life that you can handle are the perfect people. But let me tell you, the worst person in your life are the people who pretend they've never done anything. The Bible says all have sinned. And after he said, who gonna throw the stone at them? Nobody was without sin. So the Bible says that they begin to drop their rocks from the eldest down to the youngest. 
and after it was all said and done, the only person left standing was the woman they tried to kill. Let me tell you what the Lord told me to talk to you about today. Not guilty by reason of insanity. That's what I want to talk about today. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm not guilty by reason of insanity. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So Bishop Roberts, recently I read a story about two monks who had recently joined a monastery. And as is the custom of all new monks who join monasteries, their first job is to be a scribe. But what does that mean? To write the scriptures, transcribe, transcripture, scribe, to write. So the, the job of all new monks in the monastery is to copy the original text of the church, the Bible, the scripture, to copy it, to write it, starting from Genesis all the way to Revelation. But history will teach us that there are only so many chapters and verses in a book. Just imagine that if all of us joined this church one by one and all of our job was to copy the Bible word for word, it wouldn't be long by the time we got off of the first row that nobody would any longer be copying the original. We'd all be copying copies. You see? We'd be copying copies. And, and the problem with that is, and I'd be the first one to admit it, that no one's perfect. Go back and check your last three text messages and see how many words you've misspelled. Most of us don't even know what you're saying when you text it. We gotta send a question mark back. Thank God they added edit. But you, we're, we're, we're spelling there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, when we should be spelling it T-H. We're spelling T-T-O instead of T-O-O, -O, or sometimes T-W-O. I don't know how you made that mistake. But no one's perfect. Which means that by the time I get to Brandon, he's copying what Lonnie wrote. And if Lonnie misspelled a word, then Brandon's gonna misspell the word because he believes it's perfect, so he's just copying a copy. In other words, the errors are passed on. <laughs> the errors are passed on. And, and, and here is what's amazing about this. When I go back into canonical history and look at uh, the original transcript of Scripture, most of us, if many of us don't know, that John chapter seven and the last verse through John chapter eight verse 11 are missing from the original text. That means if you go back into history and find the original text, when somebody was copying the original text, some scribe somewhere intentionally left this part out of the Bible. Well, this is a crime scene. A woman is caught in the act of adultery, and there are two groups of people who were at the scene. One group is called the Pharisees. The other group, the scribes. The scribes are responsible for writing the text. Now, is there anybody in the room that finds it interesting that when the story was written, about the people who were present at the crime scene. It just so happens that the people who are writing left themselves out of the story. 
Well, well, if you had the ability to be guilty and also write law, my question is, wouldn't you leave you out too? Now, I know a lot of people like to pretend they're honest, but if you committed a crime and no, well, let me say not if, when you committed that crime and nobody witnessed it, it ain't like you went to the police station and said, I'd like to come in and confess to you that the cashier forgot to check one of the items in and I got home and found out that I didn't pay for it, so I came back here to let you know. No, you said something like, the Lord loves his own children, don't he? I mean, he look out for his own. It must be Jesus. If you found $10,000 on the street today, you're not going to go down and ask Isaiah on Isaiah Factor, listen, I'd like to do a press conference to find out who this 10,000 belongs to. You're going to see that 10,000 say, oh, Jesus, I knew you were going to deliver the wealth of the wicked. How at your boy. And so since there are errors in the text, the scribes intentionally leave themselves out of the story because they are now part and parcel to a woman who's caught in the act of adultery. And you have to understand what adultery means in these days and times because today, adultery will cost you 60%. In those days, it would have cost you 100 including your life, because those who were caught in adultery were to be stoned to death. Now, here is the issue. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, that if an adulterer or an adulteress is caught in the act of adultery, that both of them should be stoned to death. But the text describes when they were writing, the errors were passed on. We caught a woman in the act of adultery. Now, my, my question is, if you caught her, you had to catch him. Because having sex alone is not adultery, that's masturbation. Oh no, don't get quiet, come on now. I, I, I knew when I said that y'all were gonna act funny, but there's one quote that says 98% of people do it and the other 2% are liars. So don't sit in here all holy like, well, I can't believe they do that. You see how quiet it got, Ed? They be lying, man. I'm telling you, people come to church and they just act like, ooh, he talking to them. No, I'm talking to... I didn't wait a month to come and talk to somebody else. I waited a month to talk to you. So, so she's caught in the act of adultery. Well, I still have a problem because there's a difference between fornication and adultery. Fornication is when people have sex that are not married. Adultery is when people are married and they have sex with somebody who's not their spouse. So if this woman has been caught in the act of adultery, it means that she's a married woman and there has to be another man involved in the situation. But the scribes left it out. My question is, was he one of them? And there has to be a reason why the, the, the top secret documents have been redacted. There has to be a reason why somebody was left out and there is a reason why they put her on front street. So my mind got to thinking, I said, self, myself said, hmm, I said, self, why in the world would they report this story and leave the guy? out of the situation. This is, this is problematic for the scribes to write the story and also be a part of the story. This is what legal analysis will call a conflict of interest. Because you can never trust anybody to grade themselves. Oh, come on, help me in here. 
There, if you ask everybody on your row, what do you think about yourself? I'm a good person. You got to ask somebody else. Because nobody in this room can be left to grade their own paper. Anybody remember being in school? And the teacher will let you grade your own paper? How many of y'all, I meant C. Come on, talk to me. Anybody know how to turn a E to a B? How many of y'all old enough to remember Scantron sheets? Oh, I didn't even color hard because I intended to correct my answers when we got it. See, you, you smart people, you, you, you color too hard. So even when you erase it and left a mark, I shaded my answer. Because I knew if it came back wrong, I was going to erase it and say, uh, uh, Sister Johnson, I picked A. So now either we're looking at, y'all still with me? Either we're looking at the biggest mistake in canonical history or they omitted putting themselves in the story because they knew they had culpability. They knew that they had a situation. They left themselves out. They left themselves out on purpose because, watch this, now the, the, the monks that wrote what we're reading, they are not the monks who were at the crime scene. They only left John 8 out because the generation before them left it out. And they only left it out because the generation before them left it out. And they only left it out, why? Because the generation before them left, why? Because the errors were transferred. And then the Lord spoke to me and he told me to tell you, that is the reason for all of the trauma in this room. It's, it's just been passed. It's been passed on. You were not born distrustful. You were raised by somebody who didn't trust people. You were not born mean. You were born to somebody who was hurt. You, you were not born feeling disgusted uh, w when you have intimacy with your partner. You was raised by somebody who was raped. And so what happens is, is we transfer our errors. And one of the things that is culpable in the black community is that slavery has been passed down from generation to generation. And here we are, a free people still acting like we're on boats. But I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but I came to tell somebody, it's time to put the devil in this place. Touch your neighbor and say, cut the error. It's time for you to understand that just because your mama hated her husband don't mean you gotta hate yours. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Just because your auntie was angry doesn't mean you have to be. Just because your father was nasty doesn't mean you have to be trifling. It is time for those of us in the household of faith to understand that the curse has to stop with us. Slap three people and say, it stops with me. Just because you were raised by people who did not balance their money don't mean you got to spend all of yours. Just because you were raised in poverty doesn't mean you have to act like it. Just because you were raised by an alcoholic doesn't mean you have to be an addict. I'm speaking to people in this room today who understand that God has such an anointing on your life that you're going to be the first person in your family to break the curse that the devil has assigned to your last name. If I'm talking to you, make some noise in this place. Slap three people and say, the curse stops with me. The curse stops with me. The curse stops with me. I'm, I'm not going to spend all of my money. Rob Peter to pay Paul can't pay my bills. I'm going to be the last person. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm speaking to you in your life. Your children are going to go further than you. There is college tuition that's going to be paid for. You're going to have the spirit of the Lord in you. There are different things that are getting ready to happen in your life than has happened in anybody's life in the history of your family. And you better get ready because not only is it going to shock them, it's going to shock you the errors are transferred but it's up to you to change it you do not have to be who raised you I was talking to my buddy Ed, and my, my father had a stroke at 52, my brother had an aneurysm at 50, and now the devil wants me to start thinking about 50 now. 
See, some of y'all got to see you got a brother who died at 49. You had family members who had cancer. And so the devil wants you worrying between where you are and where they got sick. So that way he can denounce your purpose in between. But I speak to you, what happened to them ain't going to happen to you. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to live and not die. I don't know who this word is for. I'm just trying to find out who came to church today to get delivered. And what was going on in your family doesn't have to go on in your house. Just because your father didn't take care of you don't mean you're not going to take care of yours. I am speaking a new dimension in this place. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. They left, after they left part of the story out. They left part of the story out so they could appear to be holy. They left the story out so that when people saw them sitting on the front row, they would say, hello, brother deacon, hello, sister so-and-so. They left part of the story out so that people would think, oh, they must be God's people. They must be holy. They left part of the story out so that they could keep their reputation. And some of y'all are sitting next to people right now and you think they're better than you. Let me give you some news. The only reason why they appear to be better than you is because they left part of the story out. I want you to look at them folk who, who got church clothes and you ain't got church clothes and say, you might be dressed up, but you ain't better than me. You just left part of your story out. Yeah, she got three children and she married, but Daquan and Marcus got different daddies. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I, I, I know she married with children, and, and yes, that's her life now, but she left out the two abortions and the miscarriage. Don't you ever feel insecure sitting next to somebody? They only appear better than you because they ain't telling the whole story. I want you to shout in this place, I'm not afraid to tell my truth. I did it, I was there, I said it, but thanks be to God that he looks beyond my faults and he... Oh, I, can't, I can't do church with no fake folk. I need about 1,000 people who over the next 28 seconds will look at somebody sitting next to you and say, I did it, but I am this far by faith, leaning and trusting. Look at them, you ain't better than me. I don't care if you got a Chanel purse. I don't care if you got Valentino shoes. I don't care if the bottom of your shoes red. You still dirty on the inside. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in. Don't you feel insecure because you just joined church last week and they've been in church 20 years. And you come in here, you feel insecure because you don't know the songs. Listen, you might not know the songs, but let me tell you, people can be in church 28 years and still not know the Lord. Too many people come to church to learn the songs. Anybody want to learn the Savior? Don't you, don't you feel insecure when you come to church? All these holy rollers come to church early with a Bible in their arm. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. You call a cell phone and they got, this is the Holy Ghost headquarters. Thank you, Jesus, for calling. I'm praying that the Lord will bless you on a voicemail with some Hennessy on the countertop. They, they got a holy voicemail and their last search was porn hub. I came to fight. You don't give me no rest. I'll fight all of you. We can't save the world if we keep trying to bring them to Jesus and accuse them when Pharisees are guilty of the same thing you're trying to expose the woman for. Your suit don't make you saved. And her miniskirt don't make her a devil. We got to get this stuff out to church. I said, we got to get it out of the church. We judging people when they walk in, how they dress, how they look. Listen, let them come. Get in the environment. They will find out what is suitable for the environment, but nobody wants to be a, getting a lesson on the first day of class. You can't give me an exam and, church, and school just started. You got to teach me. A lot of people grow up in church, they ain't saved. Let me go further. 
A lot of people shout in church and they ain't saved. A lot of people buck in church and, and, and they still going to hell. And you got somebody sitting next to you right now, they don't look churchy, don't act churchy. They don't know none of the songs we sung so far today. And the day they die, they're going to be with Jesus. I got an issue with this text. I got an issue with it because they exposed this woman. Now, in order for you to see that, though, you're going to have to step out of your Jordans and put on your ancient sandals. I, I got a problem with this text because they, they say, they Tyrone, they, we caught this woman in the act of adultery. Like, how you caught her? How you just caught her? It's like, it's like one time somebody came up to me, and I gotta admit it, Jay-Z came to Houston and I was at the concert. <laughs> I'm not black, I'm OJ. Okay. And I'm in there getting it. I'm going crazy. One of the members seen me at H-E-B and she came up. She's like, Pastor, I saw you at the Jay-Z concert. I said, well, if you saw me. Then that means you must have been there too. I went on to say, and if he come back. I'm going again with better seats. I was too far. <laughs> me, me and my wife went to, we was at a hotel and we walked up to the restaurant and Johnny Gill was sitting in the seat. First thing, I couldn't even minister to him. I was like, I was at your concert when you was in Houston. <laughs> My wife was looking at me, she said, boy, you always telling stuff. <laughs> yeah. I like to just tell it. You tell your own story, so can't nobody tell on you. <laughs> <laughs> so given the legal enigma, I got several search warrants that I need to issue before I make any arrest. Um, this woman, but, they caught her in the act of adultery. And now they wanna, they wanna ostracize her. But you know, if, if you get a chance, I want you to read this when you get home, Matthew chapter five, verse 28. This is what happens when people accuse you. They caught her in the act of adultery. But Matthew, verse 528 says, I say unto you that whatever, whoever looketh up on a woman or a man to lust after them has already committed adultery in their heart. So, so why they up here accusing her of what they saw her do physically, the Bible lets us know that if you thought about it, you did it. Too. Now, if adultery is what you thought, if adultery is committed by your thoughts, then my question is, how many adulterers do we just have in this room and online? I'll wait. All of you! Don't ever tell me you ain't looked at somebody who was built just like you want them to be built. And you say, oh Lord, Jesus. See, we do it differently. Guys, this is how guys do it. When a guy sees something, he like, he be like. A woman, women don't do it like us. By the time you get close enough to a woman, she's already seen you. So guys, you don't even know she looked. She saw him before he left the house. Somehow she saw through his door. She saw him. By the time he got to you, she acted uninterested because she already saw him. And she looking at who you looking at too. Trying to see if she got the right underwear on, trying to see if everything matched, trying to see if her track slipping. Oh, you can't beat a woman looking. 
So every woman, every man in this room, if you've committed adultery by the lust in your heart, I'm trying to find out, is there anybody in this room or online that has never looked at somebody who was not yours and has some sort of salacious thought? Because if you fit that, baby, you got to drop your stone. If you fit that, you got to drop your stone. You cannot pretend to be perfect just because we can't know what you think. In fact, sometime I wish I had a technology where I can just pick random people and take your thought and put it on the screen. What if I could do that? What if I could just say, uh, think, boom. Some of y'all would never come to church. Let me get out of here. The text says that the woman was caught in the act of adultery. Can I just make one more claim and I'm going to finish? If this was a married woman, then where is her husband? Because the law said that the husband had to be the one to put her away. Let me prove it to you. Remember when Mary got pregnant? by the Holy Ghost, and all of a sudden she starts showing, and Joseph like, now, <laughs> Mary, you better do some explaining in here, because I know we ain't never done nothing, and you pregnant, who's the daddy? She said, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let me ask every man in here, if your wife got pregnant and you had never been with her and she told you that it was the Holy Ghost baby, how many of y'all gonna be like, thank you, Jesus? She says, the Holy Ghost baby, be like, what's his last name? Holy Ghost who? <laughs> Crazy name, is that his first and middle name? His mama named him Holy Ghost, where he live? And the Bible says that when she got pregnant by the Holy Ghost, Joseph wanted to what? Put her away quietly. Because the rule was the husband had to be present to put her away. The scripture doesn't say that her husband is present to put her away. Which gives me the inclination that this is not a married woman. Mm, yeah, you were wondering what this, sir, they were wondering what this subject was going to be about. I actually believe that I know who the woman who's not named in the text is. I believe sincerely that the woman in the text, and I will give you my deductive reasoning as to how I came to the conclusion. I believe the woman in the text is Mary Magdalene. Not only do I believe it, but if you go back and check Catholic history, in AD 591, the Catholic Pope Gregory I also announced that he thought and therefore sustained that the woman in the text was Mary Magdalene. You can find that. So, then, how could an unmarried woman be caught in the act of adultery? Could we have just discovered why Jesus did not condemn her? The Bible says that Mary Magdalene was a woman who was possessed by seven demons. Seven is the number of completion, which means she was completely under the control of a demon where she was uncontrollable. She could not control herself, which in today's legal society, you could claim not guilty by reason. Come here. And the Bible says in Leviticus, come here, I'm going to tell you this loophole. The Bible says in Leviticus that you cannot put a woman or a man to death for an involuntary sin. So if she was addicted to sex and she was a prostitute, then she could not be put to death because she was under the control of something else. That's loophole number one. Number two then 
I say, it must be her because is this why she was willing to look crazy breaking her alabaster box and giving a year's worth of oil to a man she never met? Or is that the reason why when he died and all of his disciples left, she stayed at the cross with his mother? Or is that the reason why when he died and was in the tomb, when nobody else showed up, it was a woman who was at the grave early Sunday morning by the name of Mary Magdalene, I came to preach to somebody in here today to tell you that the next time somebody asks you, why are you always at church? Why are you always crying? Why are you always shouting? You look at him and tell him, because he delivered me. You don't know what he's done for me. You don't know how he exonerated me. That's why I praise like I praise. That's why I shout like I shout. That's why I give like I give, because you don't know what he brought me out of. I suspect that this is Mary Magdalene and it would explain why she kept showing up for Jesus and spilling her oil and washing his hair with his feet. You don't do that for a man you don't know. She did it because when she was caught in the act of adultery, he was there for her. And since he was there for her, she is now going to be there for him. Is there anybody in here? that ever got away with stuff that wasn't exposed, that just want to spend 30 seconds thanking God. I'm going to turn my back on you. I'm going to wait. Is there anybody in here that the Lord didn't let them do you the way they wanted to do you? They wanted to send you into an insane asylum, but somehow you are still in the church shouting by the grace of God. Is there anybody want to give God glory because he did not expose you? Give your neighbor a high five. I'm just going to give him 30 seconds of praise. Some of y'all sitting next to the wrong neighbor. I swear I wish you had the right one, but I can't pick your friends. I wish you would have sat next to somebody else. But look, like, and look at somebody who don't look like they're jealous, who don't look like they're sleepy, who look like they've been through something, and just spend 15 seconds shouting with him that God brought both of y'all out. Just grab me. He brought us both out. He brought us both out. I didn't always want to do it. Sometimes I was under the influence of something else. Sometimes it was how you were raised. Sometimes it's your perspective. But thanks be to God. When God does that kind of delivering for you, don't you get in here and be quiet. Some of y'all got jobs you don't qualify for. You don't got the resume for that job, but he still blessed you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Some of y'all said you would never love again, and then God sent somebody to love you. Come on, talk to me in here. Some of y'all were giving up on God, but he didn't give up on you. I'm just trying to find at least 500 people who will thank him and break your alabaster box in this place today. I need somebody to wash his feet with your tears. I need somebody to give God the glory. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to make you shout even more. Pastor, not only do I think this is Mary Magdalene, the one who is in the text, I also think that the Mary who was related to Martha, who's the sister of Lazarus, is this Mary Magdalene. That would explain why he walked four days to come see about a man who had been stinking in the grave because when you are a friend of God, he can find you and will get to you no matter what the circumstance is. I dare you praise God until he shows up. I dare you give him glory until he shows up. I dare you shout until he shows up. Touch so somebody say I'm insane. I'm insane. I'm insane. I'm 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 insane. I'm I'm dealing with my daddy's demons. Come on, talk to me. I'm I'm insane. I'm I'm dealing with my mama's trauma. I'm in I'm insane. This is how people did it in my family. My auntie was like this. I'm insane. I know a lot of people want to pretend like your family ain't crazy. And I know what goes on in this house is supposed to stay in this house, but is there anybody here that can shout about being related to crazy folk? Anybody got at least two people that you can't bring to the picnic? When they ask you what church you go to, uh, we online, just, just online. You don't even want them to come in here embarrassing. You didn't even invite them to the wedding because you thought they was going to steal the ring.
Sometimes you are the way you are because of who you came from. Oh, come on now. This is, I get, can I minister? Because I, I, you, you know how you can't, you're trying to figure out, why am I like that? The error was passed on. Here you are fighting with a demon that your mama gave you. Fighting with a demon that was in your daddy's DNA. Mm. And, and don't be mad at your mom and don't be mad at your daddy because they got it from. See, here's one of the things about African Americans. Most of us don't know our great grandparents. Some of us don't know our grandparents. See, the only way you can know your parents is if they explain to you by the person who raised them, but when you don't have a relationship with them. See, this is what slavery did to us. It prevented us the ability to go back and find out why we are the way we are. That's why we don't have no buildings with our name on them like J.P. Morgan and Chase. It isn't that we are not smart. It isn't that we're not bright. It's that we can't go back and find our history and find out that we are connected to that which we admire. She's under the control of a demon. She's insane. She can't help herself. Paul even declared that he was insane. Romans 7 and 19, he said, for the good I want to do, I do not. But evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do, don't this sound insane? What I would... It's, it's no more that I do, but sin that dwelleth in me, I find then a law. When I would do good, evil is pre How many of you, every time you want to do good, here comes some devil. Every time you want to get your life together, here comes an offer you have a... Every time you feel like you're on the right track, here comes somebody to make you go back. How many of y'all got them people in your life that every time they say, it just irks you. Every time they say something, you just want to choke them just within two inches of life. Not murder, but almost. And you got a temper. And you can't find out why you get mad so fast, but your daddy gave you that. Demons. Warlocks, principality. We wrestle not. What am I talking about? I'm talking about patterns. I'm talking about patterns. I'm talking about every time you get in an argument, you're thinking about divorce because that's what you. See. Lord, help me in this place. See, we most of us we didn't get divorced because we were upset. We got divorced because that was the family pattern. Because if the pattern was you stay, you would have. Patterns, patterns, patterns. You eat bacon, that's a pattern. Now you're trying to break the pattern, talking about you a vegan, still eating steak. Let me tell you something. I'm so tired of you part-time vegans, I don't know what to do. Either you're gonna be one or you ain't gonna be one. I'm a vegan, but I eat. No, no. Everything after but is you, ain't it? I'm a pescatarian that eats chicken sometimes, huh? Y'all got time? This woman is not guilty by reason of insanity. That's why Jesus didn't put her to death because she was under the control of a demon. She's under the control of a demon. Now look at it. verse two and three says that, that when Jesus was in the temple teaching them and, and, and they interrupted him. Remember, he's up there teaching. All right, today we're gonna talk about the law, the 10 laws, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, Jesus, 
since we're on the subject of adultery, we had found this woman caught in the very act of adultery. Now, my question for you is, if Jesus is in the temple and they have a woman caught in the act of adultery, in the temple with her, is this an accident or is this a sting operation? Yeah, they done planned this already. So they say, now, the reason why they do this is because if Jesus does stone her to death, then he messes up his reputation. If he does not, then he breaks the law. So they are actually not after her. They are actually after him. Can I tell you something in this place today? That the devil will come after everything in your life because he's actually trying to get to you. But I want to tell you, no weapon formed against you. Oh, I can't get no church in here today. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Touch your neighbor and say, it won't work, it won't work. If you got a pen, write this down. Jesus says, he's in the temple, he's teaching. They interrupted him while he was teaching. Jesus, we caught this woman in the act of adultery. Jesus is teaching and they interrupted the class. Can I give you the definition of a hater? The definition of a hater. Now remember, Jesus is teaching. They interrupt his class to try to teach him. The definition of a hater is somebody who's teaching when they should be learning. That's what you need to understand about the people who are always hating on you. What they saying, what they're trying to teach you, they should actually be learning from you. That, that's all a hater is. A hater is a confused friend. It's somebody who really admires you. But they can't admit they admire you, so they have to turn it. Because if I wasn't worth anything, why am I worth your attention? All of your haters are people who try to teach you who don't have the courage to learn from you. Why you hating on me, I could teach you how to dress. Because you look a mess. Why you hating on me, I could teach you how to raise your children because yours are bad. If, if, you, if, if you would stop looking at me as, as, a, as a person who doesn't have anything to offer and admit the fact that you like what I have to offer. Never trust anybody who wants to teach when they should be learning. Have you ever been around somebody, the moment you start telling them what God did for you, they got to interrupt you with their story. Let me tell you what God did for me. And, and for me too, because let me tell you, you better get away. They jealous. Real friends let you have your moment. It's your moment. It's your time. We caught her in the act of adultery. Jesus says, okay. Since y'all want to bring her sin up, y'all forgot I'm Jesus and I know everything. And I know that y'all left part of John chapter 8 out. So Jesus bends down in the ground and finishes the chapter. And the Bible says he begins to write the names of the men who are at the crime scene. See, they ain't never going to get away. They can leave themselves out, but Jesus is going to write them in. Jesus starts to write their name, and next to their name, he writes their sin. And the Bible says, that this is what they did with their rock when they seen their name and their sin. I can't wait until the day that the church will drop the rocks. I can't wait until y'all drop your rocks. I'm going to stay right here. Touch your name and say, drop your rock. 
you ain't got nothing to judge me on. We are both messed up. We are all toe up. We all have sin. The church has to drop its rocks. The Bible says from the eldest to the youngest. So the old fellas drop their rock first. The senior statesman, all the way down to the rookies, everybody dropped their rocks. You know why? Because when you see your sin, isn't it amazing when I'm preaching on Sunday, sometimes, Carla, I'm preaching, and, and when I'm talking about stuff people don't do, they going crazy. But when I get on their sin, I'll be preaching, talking about, oh, you, know, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. And they be like, yeah, and don't get drunk. Yeah, and don't do that. And, and you shouldn't be living with people you ain't married with. And this is, this, is, this is what's messing up Christianity is because no matter what the Bible says, now we go to what we feel. Yeah, but it's better to just have uh, one income and, 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 and it don't make sense if we're going to be over each other's house uh, every day anyway for us to both be paying rent. So now we justify. And what's wrong with the church now? Ain't no such thing as sin no more. Ain't no sin. You just do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. The Lord know your heart. You ain't got to get better. You just can keep doing whatever you want to do, and you can pray. But you got to understand that you ain't going to have no power. At some point in time, you're going to have to turn over a new leaf. At some point in time, old things are going to have to pass away. And at some point in time, all things are going to become new. And by the way, you know why the people ain't shouting today? Because they want a church that won't rebuke them. You want a church where there is no rebuke, there is no reproof. A person just comes to church to tell you, God loves you. Let me tell you, God ain't no Santa Claus. He's a redeemer. Some of those habits you're going to have to drop. And that might mean dropping some people because some people are your habits. For those of you on, online, let me tell you, only about 20% of the room is standing up right now. 80% of them done checked all the way out. I'm talking to you now. This is a problem. We can't get better because we keep on erasing parts of the story. We keep coming to church and we keep showing up like that part of our life didn't happen. And then you want to have a mentoring program, but you don't want to be honest. Now you got five mentees, but you're only telling them about the part where you made money. Can you tell them about the trap house? Can, can you tell them about the weed that, that was in your glove compartment when you got pulled over? Can you tell them about how many partners you wish you would not have been with? Can you tell them about your STD? Come and holler at your boy. Can you tell them about the time you got so drunk? that you don't know how you got home? And I'm not talking about last week, I'm talking about last year. This is why, this is why the church has lost its power because we keep leaving part of the story out. Most of us. God ain't looking for perfect people. If he was looking for perfect people, this story would be about him sitting with the Pharisees and not the prostitute. He's sitting with her because she's sitting with him. She's with him like, Lord, listen, it wasn't adultery, but it was something. I mean, I was doing something. It wasn't what they called it, but they caught me doing something. They named it wrong, but it was me. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm trying to finish. It, 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 I didn't do what they said I did, but I did something. Stop acting innocent because they had the wrong accusation. She like, it was me, but I didn't do 
what they said I did. I, I didn't not do nothing. I just didn't do. Raise your hand if I'm talking to you. I'm just looking. I'm, 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 I'm not flawless. But I ain't perfect. I ain't as bad as they said I was, but I ain't as good as I think I am. I got issues. I got issues and I can't figure out why they won't leave me. I've watched Dr. Phil. I've read books. I watch podcasts. I'm on YouTube. I'm doing everything I can. I still wake up in the morning evil. I still wake up in the morning angry. I'm getting bitter and not better. And what's worse is I'm asking people not to judge me while I can't help but judge people. As you'd be surprised how many people who don't want to be judged who wear black robes with gavels. I ain't do that. I ain't do what they said, but I did. I did something. Jesus said, baby, you ain't got to explain yourself to me. I know you dirty, but... No, listen. But that's where my relationship with humanity started. Oh, you remember? The last time we saw God bending down in the dirt, he was creating Adam. And now we see him back in the dirt again. All of you perfect people, I want you to know you have no room in the kingdom because God likes to play in the dirt. He looking for somebody he can save. Jesus is looking for somebody he can heal. Anybody want to just say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. If you withdraw yourself from me, I don't know where. I did something, but I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't do what they, they said I did. Psalms 51, you ain't got to sit down, I'm done. Psalms 51 says, this is one of my favorite scriptures because the Bible says that God showed us mercy according to his loving kindness and into the multitude of his tender mercies. Watch this, the Bible says he blotted out our transgressions. Pastor, all of my life when I read this text, I majored on the writing. I never paid attention to the bowing. The Bible says that he bowed down and began to write in the dirt. And in Psalms 51, I found out that the Hebrew word for bowing is tender mercies and loving kindness. The word blot out means to erase. It literally meant that God will bend over backwards to erase your mess. Lord Jesus. The reason why this sermon ain't working for some of y'all is because you ain't put yourself in the place of the woman caught. You still think you the Pharisee. But anybody in here who puts yourself in the woman situation want to thank God over the next 15 seconds that he will bend over to erase your mess. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Somebody in the balcony, anybody want to give God the glory that he will bend over to blot out your transgressions. Find somebody who looks like they got the Holy Spirit and shake them and hold them and hug them and say, I'm glad that God looked beyond my faults. Come on, find somebody else. Come on, find somebody else. The Bible says, behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sins of the world. Somebody shout, he blotted it out. He blotted it out. He blotted it out. How many of y'all ever been accused by anybody? How many of y'all ever been lied on? How many of you were mad when they did it? He said, oh, heck yeah. He ain't say heck either. I'm with you, bro. Hey, get it how you live, bro. You are upset about nothing. They exposed her. But they didn't 
didn't know Shalene, they were doing her a favor. Because while they were exposing her, guess what they did for her? They took her to Jesus. I'm trying to tell you that the people who hate on you are only introducing you to a level, another level of glory that you would have not seen if they didn't try to stone you. I need about eight people in here to start giving God the glory that what the devil meant for evil, God turn it around for your good. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, I'm not guilty by reason of insanity. I'm not saying I didn't do it, but I'm saying he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. Grab a neighbor by the hand, look him right in the eye and shout, neighbor, oh neighbor, you don't know what he brought me through. I feel all right. You don't know where he brought me from. You don't know where he picked me up, dusted me off, picked me up, turned me around, uh, placed my feet on a solid ground. I need you to find somebody on your row who understands that they're not saved because they're perfect. They're saved by the grace of God. Rock them and reel them. Reel them and rock them. Rock them and reel them. Reel them and rock them. Rock them and reel them. Reel them and rock them. Rock them and reel them. Reel them and rock them. Rock them and reel them. Reel them and rock them. Y'all missing it. Rock them and reel them. Rock, rock, rock. Oh Christ, the son of the rock I stand. Is there anybody in here that wants to give the rock to praise? Open your mouth and give God the praise. Shout it, yeah. Shout, yeah. I feel something happening. I feel 300 people in the room about to get a breakthrough. After I say this, I'm done. I remember when I was 14 years old and I announced my calling to preach. I had to announce it to a man who never acknowledged me. I'm about to help somebody. If you don't know my story, I spent my whole life in the church where the pastor was my father, but he never acted like a father, never told the church I was his son. And when the Lord called me, I had to announce it to a man who never acknowledged me. Are y'all praying with me? But I stand here today realizing that I didn't need his acknowledgement. I feel glory in him. That I had been seen by somebody who looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Crab you a neighbor, shout neighbor. You didn't need it. That's why God didn't let you have it. You might have wanted it, but it wasn't in your destiny. Anybody in the room? Want to go higher? I feel the glory of God. I feel the glory of God because the Bible says at the end of the story, everybody dropped their rock and walked away. And after it was all over, she was the only one left standing. Say it one more time. They came to condemn her, but they left condemned. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows.
be not weary in your well doing for you will reap a harvest if you faint don't give up I had to tell a man that my father called me and I couldn't call him father. Think about that. And most of y'all would have missed your calling because you would have been too proud and too angry and hurt to have to submit to somebody who hurts you. I had to submit my ministry to a man who died without ever paying child support. And you can ask anybody. I've been, other than my siblings, I've been knowing this, we've been knowing each other 42 years. My daddy is his uncle. His daddy is my father's nephew. My name is Keon, his name is Sion. My father didn't raise me and his didn't raise him. It was past. I'm gonna let him tell his own story. But God had us coming together for 42 years and we didn't even know it. If I told you his story, you say, how did two people in the same family go through the same thing. Did not somebody see the error? But sometimes your name has to be dragged through the dirt. Your heart has to be broken. I'm telling you, anybody ever had your heart I know some of y'all ain't gonna be honest, but the, the purpose of the story, because if we're gonna break these patterns, we gotta be honest. The truth is, it almost drove you to hatred. I just wanted to go to heaven too bad to hate. My sisters will tell you, my sisters here right now, Kiana, we got the same father. I spent most of my childhood trying to keep her from hating our father. She couldn't get beyond what he did not do. See, most of your trauma ain't because of what somebody did to you, it's because of what they didn't. And I would look my sister in the eye and realize that I wasn't, I was born her brother, but I was called to be a father. And I would tell her, you can't hate him. You cannot hate him. You can't. Because he who is without sin, the only way you can judge him is to be flawless. And if you have any sin, you have to drop your rock. If you ain't flawless, you can't be the judge. I don't care what they did to you. I went to him 28 years ago at 2323 West 11th Avenue and said to him, the Lord has called me to preach. And he looked at me and he said, I've known it your whole life. He said, I used to Hold you in my hand. He said you would eat two bottles before you would even get full. I looked at him and I said, you held me? He said, yeah, for the first two years of your life, I was there. 
said, no, because hurt will blind you. And hurt will make you forget things you know. They used to call me Dr. Key. That was my nickname. And it was him on a Sunday morning, this Sunday, 28 years ago, he put me in the pulpit and let me preach 10 minutes before he preached his sermon in front of 1,200 people. And I preached a sermon called Faith, Where is Yours? And the entire time I was battling between fighting him and preaching the word. And I have it on recording now. I've never told a soul this. On my phone right now, when he was dying, I laid in the bed with him, wiped the food from his mouth, wiped the tomatoes off of his t-shirt. The last meal I saw him eat was a small pork chop with Laurie seasoning salt and a tomato. It was all he could eat. And I saw him push the button on his chair because he couldn't stand up. He, the, the chair lifted him up and he walked up two steps around the corner, took another left, went around the bed to his side of the bed and laid down. And he whispered to me and said, Son, I'm so sorry. I've got it on my phone. I recorded every word of it. He said, I'm so sorry I didn't acknowledge you. I was too weak of a man. And at that moment, everything I had built up in me began to release because I realized that I was a weak man too. And people say to me all the time, how could you forgive somebody who did you like that? He who was without sin. Let him cast the first stone. You're going to have to break this pattern. Or you're not going to get your promise. And I know you think your life is good, but God's got so much more that he wants to give you. You're going to have to break your mama's curse on you, not for her. You're going to have to break it on you. And I give my mother all the glory and praise that you can give an earthly person because never once in my life did she say anything negative to me about him. Listen. And even though he wasn't a father, she knew that I was a minister and she knew that I needed to be in the house where the favor of God would be on my life and someone would teach me and everything I know about the Bible he taught me. Because sometimes a person can't be what you need for them to be, but they can be what they know how to be. He didn't know how to father me, but he knew how to teach me to be a preacher. And so I stand here today wishing I could go wake him up out of the grave and say to him, it was good that I was afflicted. I want to thank you for never making a basketball game. I want to thank you that we grew up five blocks from each other, but you never came in my house. I want to thank you that I've never been on a family vacation with you. I want to thank you that you never put a pair of shoes on my feet while you drove Benzes and Cadillacs. I want to thank you that while you were living in your five-bedroom house, we were, we were trying to bomb our house just to kill the roaches, just to go to sleep at night. I want to thank you. Because had he lived long enough, I could have took care of the man who didn't take care of me.
And now everything he didn't give my mother, I am able to do. Because I dropped my rock, picked up my calling, and I am no longer the same. If there's anybody in this place today who understands this testimony and you feel something in it, I just want you to begin to raise your hands if you're online. I want you to look me in the eye through the screen and I just want you to say, Lord, help me break this pattern. Lord, help me break this pattern. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, I don't want to be known as this kind of person. I don't want to do it. I want to, I want to overcome it. It wasn't my fault, but it is my life. It is my destiny. I, I need to do better. I've got to do better. I've got to get over this hurt. I've got to get over this trauma. My children are depending on it. My wife sees it in me. My husband sees it in me. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. This is my season. Lift those hands in this place today. I want you to begin to worship him in this place. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. I'm no longer the same. I'm no longer the same. Hallelujah. He broke the chains. trauma with you daily God wants to do so much with you and you can't change that which you don't acknowledge you can't hide it from God you can hide it from us you can't hide it from God God said I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly you see sometimes you think you think that you you hate the person it's just an error that was passed down to you that, that somebody said some kind of colloquialism in your house. We don't go back. We don't double dip. Uh, everybody here got those family sayings that you say to yourself unconsciously, not knowing that the error was passed down. I'm able to have a healthier relationship with my wife because I confronted those voices in my head. false masculinity that makes you think that the only way you can win is to be hard. Brothers, I'm telling you right now, softer works way better than hard. And when you know who you are, you don't have to walk around proclaiming it. I don't have to walk around my house talking about I'm the man of this house. She know who the man of the house is. Trauma. Because of what happened to somebody else. I release the demons over your life. I release the possession over your life. You do not have to operate according to what you saw in your house. The Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. Somebody say, God, do a new thing. Do a new thing. Do a new thing in my house. Do a new thing in my marriage. Do a new thing in my family. Do a new thing in my money. Do a new thing in my body. I'm not getting breast cancer. I'm not getting colon cancer. There will be no aneurysm. There will be no tumors. There will be no strokes. There will be no heart attacks. There are no blood clots. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Somebody declare it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus break the chains over our life I speak against premature death hallelujah I speak against kidney disease I speak against diabetes I speak against irregular heartbeats I speak against back pain I speak against bone density issues I speak against tumors Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I speak against fatherlessness. You're calling daughters back to their mothers and sons back to their fathers. 
I speak against sibling rivalry. Hallelujah. I speak against poverty and I speak generational wealth in this house today. We break the chains. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody in here who loves the Lord, open your mouth and begin to give God the glory. Come on and open.